good to have you back for this uh, show, Think Tech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture. This happening to be our 296th show and the accumulated viewership you see down there. So welcome back. Us is uh, from the um, opposite ends of our globe back in Honolulu, Hawaii at his uh, Artipoff Design home, uh, DeSoto Brown. Hi, DeSoto. Hello, everyone. And me on that other end in Munich, Germany, Martin Despain. We wished we would have had Matt back with us, but he had to attend a faculty meeting. So let's hope for next week. Uh, I'm, I was wondering if that's his, did they drag him into teaching too, uh, or is it his institutional clients? I think the letter, but we will find out next week when we ask him. So we default back, or actually it's more, we go back to uh, comparing the two windy cities of Chicago and Honolulu. And by the way, yours is, uh, Honolulu is literally windy right now, right? Yes, we are undergoing the remnants of Hurricane Calvin, which uh, fortunately did not turn out to be a major thing. Um, some rain, some wind, but nothing terrible. All right, that's good to know. And just a weather check of uh, Chicago, where we're talking about, and here Germany is pretty much the same temperature-wise, somewhere in the mid-80s, not too bad, and, but we don't have the storm. We had it last week as we, we gave it to you, so... Thank you. Uh, if we Thank go you. back to the, you're welcome. If you go back to the first slide, which is also the last one we ended on, but shame on us. Uh, there's a saying in Germany. I have my weekly German lessons for you. Den Wald nicht sehen vor lauter Bäumen. I don't even let you try, but it means you don't see the trees because of the forest. And here we didn't see the Aptera. We camouflaged the Aptera too much into the, into the treetops there. And our point was that uh, back then in the 60s or the 70s, uh, where we had the land yacht and the Straßenfreude, and their fuel efficiency you know, wasn't anywhere where we have to have it today. So, um, but buildings or cars, you can't really blame because they didn't really know any better. But these days we know better. And that's why we were critical about the newest SOM building here. And we wish that's what we forgot to say. And we say here now, and we want to illustrate, it would be like an Aptera because the Aptera is that car that this is a reference to our other show, Automobiles and Architecture, that thrives to be uh, not even having to um, stop at any gas station, not even an electric one because its body is basically engineered the way that it could be, or it will be covered with thin film PV. So while it drives, and that's predominantly where you are, over here, maybe not so much because you never know and could be quite cloudy and overcast at times, but uh, in Hawaii, the sun is almost always out there, except now when you got the storm, same in California where Ron Lindgren is. So that's where it will work. And that kind of equivalency in architecture, we would like to see. However, we also threw in the very little show quote at the, at the right, which is the link vault. This is a quote from our auto ar automobile uh, architecture show because Neil Young, the old rocker, who also used to dwell, reside on the island somewhere, I think on the big island, he converted his 59 Lincoln Continental with a team of engineers into a hybrid car so many years ago. So that's obviously the other thing in architecture to keep things that had been created with a carbon footprint and try to get that carbon footprint out of it by keeping it in the life cycle as long as you can. Because even right. with the Teslas, right, you still got to mine, you still got to go into the ground and, and, and make metal and all that stuff, right? And so... Um, so not to having to redo that by buying a new car, buying a new car, you want to, you know, keep that other metal in the ground as much as possible. Correct. And I think the, I think the point to make also is that, uh, because that was a refurbishment and a renovation and a readaptation, then as you just said, we are not being required to dig up more metal to create a whole new car body. But in the case of um, buildings, obviously a building doesn't move around and a building is a much bigger 
um, investment than a car is. So you don't replace a building as easily as you replace a car. And renovating a building and readapting and being innovative with an existing building is something that we can and should do more of rather than sometimes just demolish and build a whole new one. Absolutely. And in our discipline and profession for that, one of the major protagonists who is going to following us or we, him, that gets us to the next slide is Lord. I think he was, but I think he's now Baron, which is supposedly higher. The next rank up there in when the queen, when she was still alive now, is Charles the king, gives it to certain people. This is Foster, Norman Foster, and we've been following him we were in Duisburg together to saw, see revisit one of his early buildings from the early 90s when i got to school when i went to school and we talked to matt about it so here's some show quotes of that and uh, i think next week we should throw in something from semi who says hi by the way who is on a school vacation to our capital city of berlin and this is where, uh, before the reunification, uh, uh, Günther Benisch had been building our capital in Bonn. Uh, and then uh, our government, which was very controversial, because uh, not only going back to Berlin, which is also where Hitler was governing, but then also the Reichstag is a very historically, for you, the historian, the soda, a very historically loaded building that we had a lot of discussions because the very sort of open, you know, transparent, democratic pavilion by Banish was for many, me including, way better representing uh, a Germany that you had kindly gotten back on our feet if we had screwed up so badly. So many were afraid that would go backwards. And, uh, but the faith was in Foster, who's a British, by the way, and he uh, uh, did a decent job of renovating, remodeling the Reichstag and the cupola was replaced from basically stone to glass. And there's a spiraling staircase that goes up there and you're nodding in the right direction. Um, you know, most everyone in the world probably has a, an idea of that, but we, uh, Sammy promised to take pictures, so we will show them uh, next week and, and share with everyone. And today, so as we me, promised, yeah. Tell me what you think. I mean, I have obviously never been to that newly renovated or fairly newly renovated Reichstag dome, but what do you think of it as someone who's seen it? I, I think he did the best job he can because there was a program and the program said already, you know, we want that. And he did the best he can. But, you know, absolutely speaking, um, uh, you know, pressing your nose against the glass walls in Bonn, which you, you, you were able to do as a pedestrian. So it was really democratically inclusive. Because there was no, I mean, there were security barriers and that was before 9-11, you know, but still. But you as a pedestrian, as, as a citizen, were able to walk straight up to the glass, just by the way, as we were, you know, saying in, in, in the capital, in Honolulu, Hawaii, you're able to do that too. You go into the courtyard, you go to the chambers and you press your nose against the glass and you see the ones down there that you elected you know, doing their job, hopefully the job you wanted them to do, right? So this is an interesting pairing and comparison. That was the case in Bonn and 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 still is uh, in, in Honolulu. Here, unfortunately, you first have to purchase a ticket and then you have to get up to that to the dome, which is elevated, and then you can look down as well. But it's it's not as inclusive anymore because you got to get a ticket and tickets, I guess, are limited and you got to purchase them and you know, about that mechanics, I have to ask, you know, in particular, Sammy, and then I will report on that. But that's yeah. my two cents, you know, okay. regarding that. Well, that's very helpful to know, because as I said, it's not something I personally experienced. And I agree with you that the Hawaii State Capitol is admirable in the ability for the average person to simply walk in and look mm -hmm. as ever, uh, whenever he or she wishes to do so. Yeah, absolutely. And today we will share and show next slide uh, Foster's um, project in Chicago, which is surprisingly because the other two uh, icons of him, one is very, very important to us because we talk about high rises all the time. We have to because they're popping up like mushrooms in Honolulu. 
And Foster is to be um, complimented for having um, created one of the pioneers in bioclimatic high-rise design. And that was also in Germany, the Commerce Tower in Frankfurt in the mid nineties. We've been reporting about that here and there. So it's kind of surprising that in the cradle of high-rise architecture, which Chicago undoubtedly is, he has to my knowledge not yet designed a tall building, uh, but he had designed a very shallow and short building, which is this one here. And this is the Apple store uh, where you can buy products from the Apple company. And this is the project here. We've both been looking into that, uh, been reading some reviews and you know, um, matching them with the pictures that I took when we sent me there. So let's discuss this. Uh, Foster itself described that and you had your first sort of, you know, constructive criticism regarding that. He basically describes it with was very, very, you know, familiar and I'm very sympathetic with that as the absence of architecture and the presence of place and space. We talked about the riverfront redevelopment by the company Zazaki, um, where they open it up to pedestrians and they want people to walk down there. And of course, then you have to also get down there and get up again, which we see there. So there's this very immaterial barrier of, uh, of glass that we will get to more zooming in in a couple of slides. But, you know, it's, it's butt joined. There's no columns there. There's no post. Uh, it's just basically free spanning glass in uh, extremely amazing dimensions and sizes. So he basically wants to make that be invisible. Uh, I mean, also amazing that there aren't any, you know, um, sticky foils of birds on there to prevent real birds to fly in, which usually happens when you have a last like that. We had to go through that a couple of times ourselves. So it's it's pretty amazing. And so what was your thought about that part of the stairs and the, the accessibility, so to speak? Well, one of the things that struck me in the picture of the building from across the uh, the other side of the stream or the river is that the walkway on the pedestrian promenade next to the river is not that wide. And I was surprised because the rest of this is very expansive and very open and very walkable. Um, and the other things that uh, also struck me, which I think we're probably going to talk about, are first of all, description of what the roof, the problem they had with the roof. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, um, I'm presuming that this is triple paned glass. I think we've got a, we've got a close up view of it. Um, and that is really, really important because Chicago gets incredibly cold and also gets hot, as you pointed out. So if this is air conditioned, you need to be keeping the indoor temperature not affected as much as possible by the outdoor temperature for people to be able to um, be comfortable inside. And I think also one of the things that was wanted here was not only to make this a showroom for people to buy products, but also they left it open with places to sit and gather because they wanted people to come and hang out there just as a place to presumably use your own personal computer or phone. And I'm also assuming that people can sit on these stairs and do sit on these stairs in addition to the chairs and tables that they've got. Also true. And the little show quotes from our experience at the bottom right there is the Corkman headquarters, which is also dwelling on high transparency towards one side. And also keeping the building low on the northern side and opening it up to the southern side extremely, but also uh, tectonically, because this is a uh, along the lines of Gottfried Semper's earthwork framework and enclosure. It's kind of a composite structure. And here we had to read, because it's not apparent, uh, the roof, which you pointed out structurally, is out of carbon fiber. So a very, very durable, you know, very, you know, load bearing material that can be very light and doesn't become big and thefty because he wanted that to allude to the, to the top of a laptop of the, of the products of Apple, very thin, crisp edge and carbon fiber was able to do that. Then what you see is the underbelly of that uh, out of wood, just in the whole Crookman headquarters is basically just uh, finishing surface, right? And in Crokeman, it's a steel structure that's hidden behind. In his case, it is carbon fiber. 
to get it even thinner. And to the next slide, uh, per your points, uh, the Soto of uh, looking at it from across the river here. And we also see similar to the Cropman that actually the top picture is from up north uh, and the one down there from the river is from south. So Foster being the bioclimatic pioneer, here we go again, minimizing the surface of the building towards the harsh winter winds is accomplished here while at the same time opening it up to catch the sun in the winter time and then having the overhang, we can go to the next slide, which is a compilation of four ones addressing several of the points you made. At the top right, we see this is uh, somewhere half midday, a uh, high noon, and we see that that roof is cantilevering enough out to keep the glass in shade. In fact, there's even a little bit of a, a, an extra room that reminds us of the, the, the school diner in Ilse that we share it that we build. And to the left, it shows, top left shows perfectly what you said. It's it's not just for buy, buy, buy and leave. It's about you're, you're allowed to stay either before, you know, you made the decision of what you buy or after that when you unpack it and, you know, start to familiarize yourself or you can just come in and actually sit there. So it's a very kind of civil architecture. It's not just commercial. And that's the point he wanted to point out, you know, may come across. Bottom left, you see another element um, uh, towards his goal of dematerialization because there is, uh, there's very few posts and columns. There's one in the back um, and then there is two, um, one is behind me that you don't see out of presumably steel. And that one is encased with this mirrored, probably a uh, piece of furniture where they store things in there. And the actual sales room is sort of tucked back in this sort of carved out cave that we see at the bottom there with the many chairs. And per your point, the soda at the, at the bottom right is me zooming up close. And that's what we recommend to the audience. Be like a, a, a surgeon when you analyze architecture, get up close, uh, do little you know, uh, insertions and look here and you see the three lines for triple glaze. Absolutely spot on. Uh, still, I would say, um, you know, given the harsh that you just recalled, the hard, harsh, super harsh wind conditions with wind chills of 30 below or something, this building is probably not going to be, I just give this a try from my experience in this area, to be net zero. But considering, you know, orientation and insulation and shading and, you know, allowing the sun, it's probably doing pretty well. You know, and, and maybe, again, uh, this kind of typology might actually not be the most, um, you know, um, inviting for maybe net zero because the client certainly has um, maybe, um, you know, intentions, requirements that are in contradiction. But that being said, uh, I think what we all said, he did a pretty decent job once again. So... You know, he should also do a high rise because we need much better high rises as we already started to analyze and we will continue to go in that direction. So please, the city of Chicago commission a Norman Foster high rise in Chicago. And there was one other thing that in one of the articles that you sent to me, which I find kind of amusing, which was that carbon, carbon fiber roof that's so smooth and has a slightly curving um, edge that comes down mm -hmm. towards the edge from the top, what they discovered was when a lot of snow falls on that roof, it slides off unexpectedly from all of those edges because it is so smooth and slippery and it slopes down like that. So the visual thing that was desired, in other words, to look like you said, like a closed laptop, <laughs> had an unexpected, not so good effect in uh, the setting of Chicago. Absolutely. And then you said rightly so, a problem we in Hawaii never <laughs> have to deal with, it, except where? At the top of Mauna Kea. But there's where not a lot. Are of not, and we're not supposed to build there for various reasons, one of them religious, other elevation, and many more, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you recently had a quick trip to California. Yes, by the way, and I flew through there and um, just a glimpse of it. Next slide. We see another uh, piece of architecture that, um, you know, client Apple decided to have Norman Foster be the architect. And that is their headquarters. 
And just from the airplane win window, uh, you know, as visible as that donut ring is, really makes you uh, aware of how huge that thing is, right? This is the Apple headquarters nestled neatly into this sort of forest. And again, he pulled all the whistles and bells of sustainable ecological design in a high-tech manner that one can possibly can. And it's another very impressive building that, again, we need to see more of these in the world. And again, Foster has been doing this almost stubbornly, even when it wasn't that on vlog. That's why he's really such a you know, uh, such a pioneer, such a grandfather, you know, in, in that in that field. And, um, you know, to make us a little bit more jealous about, you know, um, uh, what they got in Chicago for us in Honolulu, next slide, just a quick glimpse, um, because uh, the, our store in the Alamoana Mall, we don't even show, it's one of these more generic corporates, uh, still, you know, a frameless glass fronts, but you got them everywhere. Actually, the Munich store has exactly the same one. But in our, you know, very appreciated uh, Royal Hawaiian um, shopping mall, Hawaiian Center, they have another store that we talked about in at least the show of volcanic veneer and ventilation, which we see up there at the top right and the the, the the lower right, bottom right picture I took before I left to show us the whole scope of that. And there was the rumor of while we would say, oh, this is clad in basalt, this is this is cool, but there's there's the rumor that the, the corporate headwater guys had it all shipped to Cupertino to have it all lay out on the floor and then be picky about which you know piece to use and which not. And that's sort of counterproductive to the uh, the attempt of using local material, right? And again, I'm I'm throwing in also um, uh, pictures of my ongoing um, uh, evidence-based design life cycle assessment post occupancy evaluation because the basalt uh, uh, clad um, um, waiting blocks of the Expo train station that we did around the turn of the millennium. Um, have a sibling detail feature to how they uh, basically, um, I would say, water jet uh, uh, cut the the apple the apple apple logo into the basalt. Here we did it with these uh, glass sheets with uh, letters of um, of Schwitters from the back. And here you see. First, I was reading that actually as Pope, but probably it was dope to begin with, and then it was kind of running down. And I thought to myself, hey, this is what Twitter is the weird old Dada guy would have really loved. So that, that user participation, which probably my client hates and some customers or travelers hate, but I thought like, this is right on. Maybe it made Twitter's to be become alive again. And he was doing that because he was so weird. <laughs> so, and, and the thing that I notice, as I often bring up, that's an English word used at, for graffiti in Germany and shows you how yeah. pervasive the English, English language is in Germany and other places yeah. too. Absolutely, yeah. And also I was there, as you see in the middle picture at the left column uh, where that lady in the red jacket is running, that was on a rainy day, which is usually for photographers for us, like the bad day, like the not to go out and take pictures. But in doing my POE, EBD um, stuff, it was good because it shows us and now everyone else, the nature of basalt is that it's spongy and when it gets wet, it gets soaked and then it turns darker than it already is depending on what kind of basalt source you have here. So where, where the Pope dope is, is spray painted on is covered by the glass, which is supposed to be, because you're supposed to wait there and be protected from the rain. But everything else in the in the top uh, left picture that you see them all soaked, and it basically sort of is enhancing the the contrast between the sort of the flyer fire flyer firefly like uh, glass sheets. That's how they will appear when it gets dark and they get lit up by the fiber optic cables behind. And um, yeah, the contrast then gets even more sort of enhanced over there. We are almost at the end, but let's go to the next slide uh, to introduce what we're going to talk about when we continue this one here, because this is going back to a glass architecture. 
uh, and something that way back in my previous show, Urban Transcendence, uh, Ulf Meyer has been sharing with us in a lecture he gave, also in a think tank show that we show quote up there. And this is the double facade. We've been talking about uh, that with Matt quite a bit, and we will, you know, continue to do here. Um, a Chicago architect, Helmut Jan, who is very important for Chicago um, and unfortunately got run over by two cars about not that long ago on his bicycle and was killed by that at the too young age of 80, has been blessing us in his home culture and country where he's from because he's German too originally. And at the bottom right, the two pictures, you see the headquarters for the main postal service company or the German one. And he built that many years ago in 2002, uh, so two decades ago. This building is also equipped with a double facade. Um, and so is the building that we predominantly see on, on this slide here. Um, but I think going into detail that we will save it for next week. And I can already warn you, because you being the historian and caring for the past and the history, there's something rather tragic here on the side. And I hadn't been in Chicago for 10 years, shame on me. So I had sort of memorized something different on the side. And I had to get my gears going and recover all that information because there was a building here on that side uh, that was very, very iconic and very important. And we will talk about the tragedy of and, and the reason why it's not there anymore. But uh, this is a academic, a university building by the architects Perkins and Will, who also have a very large office in Chicago. They're actually headquartered in Chicago. And their tradition or their beginnings trace back to the collaboration with the Serenans, um, the Scandinavian architects where the father immigrated and then his son was born there. And they basically did uh, one of the most iconic pioneers in school design, the Crow Island School, further up the Lake Michigan that we're talking about on the way to Milwaukee. And out of this sort of beginning came the, the, you know, the firm Perkins and Will, which are now huge and corporate, one of the biggest ones. And they're the architects of this building here, which again is a double facade, which in, in Chicago makes more sense because you got that cold days, you shut everything, you get the sun going through, you create this buffer that warms up and then you can let that warm air, you know, heat the building. Uh, in, in, in Honolulu, as we talked many times, not that easy or not that, you know, um, uh, uh, attractive because, again, uh, heating is not our issue. Cooling is our issue all the time. But that has to be it for today. So I'll see you again for picking up from here. And until then, you stay safe. I'm happy to hear Calvin has been downgraded to a tropical storm and is not even a Category 1. So happy to hear. Stay safe. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.